We are the Ministry of the Real Truth, and possibly about a week ago, on the way to do shopping in our local community, we came across a food donation cupboard. Usually, put cans of food in there, bread. Sometimes people put frozen food in there. Pretty silly to do that. We never touch anything that's frozen like that or open or whatever. And occasionally the odd books and children's toys. And we came across some children's books which we gave to a man in a supermarket because he had two children. Uh, One was called Fart Boy and the other one was something about a tuatara or lizard we usually do that when we find them because you know kids like to read and the parents were, the parent was very grateful but we remembered we had this in our bag this book titled Satha Sai Baba and Jesus Christ a Gospel for the Golden Age by Peter Phipps we found it in the public domain public access so no copyright breach was intentional and we bring it to all for educational purposes alone you're probably wondering who the heck is Sai Baba he looks like a Fijian this big fuzzy afro we actually got a distant cousin relation her husband actually looks like that um, but he's since became a minister and I think he counts here off and he got done for tax embezzlement something like that anyway he looked pretty similar to that guy uh, okay, so you're probably wondering who the heck he was. Okay, so you're going to find some information on him. He was born Ratnakaram Sathanarayana Raju, 23rd November 1926, 24th of April 2011. He was an Indian guru and philanthropist. What's a guru? A Sanskrit term for a mentor, guide, expert or master of certain knowledge or field in pan-Indian traditions. A guru is more than a teacher. Traditionally, the guru is a reverential figure to the disciple or student, with the guru serving as a counsellor who helps mould them or something like that. I don't know what the rest of the wording there is. And philanthropist. At the age of 14, he claimed that he was the reincarnation of Shirdi Sai Baba. A rebirth or transmigration of this particular man. Sai Baba or Shuri, also known as Shuri Sai Baba, who was an Indian spiritual master and fakir, considered to be a saint revered by both Hindu and Muslim devotees during and after his lifetime. Strange, these people, because we had a Christian friend's parents who apparently had spent time in India, maybe preaching there, and this lady was his mother was walking along the street and she saw this Indian man walking pretty close to her right in front of her towards her and she thought I might rob her because it might be popular sort of thing to do over there I don't really know but she clutched her bag for some reason her handbag and he says look don't worry lady I'm not going to steal your money from you okay I'm into Hinduism or whatever and you've got 300 rupees in there or something like that and she was like quite amazed how how did he know that that's what she had in there you know they had that sort of skill it's kind of strange but yeah uh, at the age of 14 he claimed that he was the reincarnation of Shuri Sai Baba and might have seen this guy's picture in a lot of Indian dairies locally wondering who the heck this guy was it was a painting or something like that Maybe. And he left his home saying, My devotees are calling me, I have my work. In 1972, Satya, Satya, Satya Sai Baba founded the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust. Its goal was to enable its members to undertake service activities as a means to spiritual advancement and so forth. Through his organization, Satya Sai Baba established a network of free, general, and super specialty hospitals, free medical clinics, drinking water projects, schools, universities, ashrams, auditoriums, and education technology.
an ashram as a spiritual hermitage for, or a monastery in Indian religions. By virtue of sizable influence, many feel Sai Baba provides an example of the phenomenon referred to as Mahagurus, that is, gurus with a global reach. Citing the number of Sai, Sai centres over 2,137 countries, the scope of service and charitable work, free hospitals, drinking water, projects, social sphere and influence of devotees, royalty, celebrities, high-ranking politicians, along with a total number of devotees, estimated to be from 6 to 100 million worldwide, as well as being seen as a global movement, extending in some very surprising ways. This is biography. It's basically what's set up here. As a child, he was described as unusually intelligent and charitable, though not necessarily academically inclined, as his interests were of a more spiritual nature. He was uncommonly talented in devotional music, dance and drama. From a young age, he had been purported to have been capable of materialising objects such as food and sweets out of thin air. Yeah. So he either learnt that, or he had that natural ability. Proclamation. Almost... Everything known about Sathya Sai Baba's Sathya Sai Baba's early life stems from the hagiography. Hagiography, graphy, is a biography of a saint or an ecclesiastical leader, as well as by extension an adulatory and idealized biography of a preacher, priest, founder, saint, monk, nun, or icon in any of the world's religions. And it says this early. It was early Christian hagiographies. Uh, well, lots more information here. Later years, he established Dharma Shetra or the Sathya Mandir in Mumbai in 1973. He established the Shivam Mandir in Hyderabad and so forth. In March 1995, Sai Baba started a project to provide drinking water to 1.2 million people in the drought-prone Rayalasima region in the Anantapur district of Andhra Pradesh, and so forth. Old age and illness and death. He suffered a fractured hip in 2003 when a student standing on an iron stool slipped and the boy and stool both fell on him. After the incident, he gave Darshana from a car or his porto chair. After 2004, Sai Baba used a wheelchair and slowly began to make fewer public appearances. Uh, March 28, 2011, he was admitted to the Sri Sathya Sai Super Specialty Hospital in Puttaparthi after he complained of giddiness and showing, slowing of the heartbeat. Initially, his condition improved and on 4th April, he was reported all his vital parameters, or parameters were near normal. However, over the course of the following weeks, multiple organs failed to set in and his condition progressively deteriorated. He died on Sunday, 24th April at 7.40 IST. That's what's at Indian Standard Time, age 84. Sai Baba had predicted that he would die at age 96 and would remain healthy until then. After he died, some devotees suggested that he was referring to that many lunar years. as counted by Telugu speaking Hindus rather than solar years and using the Indian way of accounting for age which counts years to come as part of the person's life other devotees have spoken of his anticipated resurrection reincarnation or awakening funeral and mourning Dalai Lama expressed shock over the demise of the death of him and he gets a uh, uh, certain days twenty fifth and twenty sixth April is days of morning and so forth. Anomalies of possible unnatural death He stopped taking food in the last two months of his life since Baba was it on uh, 10th April direct relatives expressed one day as why well they were kept in the dark and knew nothing about Sai Baba's state of health it's almost two months since Baba stopped taking food but we were not told about that 
told about it. Family members said they were livid about the secrecy around Sai Baba's health and medical treatments and as to why the trust was not allowing anyone directly direct contact with him except for Sathajit, his personal attendant. They only saw him from a distance in the ICU on April 2 after raising a furore. Of course, a ruckus probably. It was on 28th of March when Sai Baba complained of giddiness and slowing of the heartbeat that he was taken to hospital. And he died 20 days prior, according to the Deccan Herald, on 21st of April. And his death was not announced in order to get money from Indian and foreign devotees. And Indian Times talk about him in their newspaper. In 2015, Ganapathy. Ganapathy Raju Sathya Sai Baba's first cousin alleged that Sai Baba was murdered. He believed Satya Sai passed away on 29th of March and not as officially declared on 24 April 2011. Elaborating, Baba was a victim of well planned conspiracy and pre planned high tech murder, adding that the tr trust members had ordered a glass coffin and two truckloads of flowers even when Baba was unwell. So they saying that they knew that he's going to die. They had they planned. Ganapathy, Ganapathy also led that trust members were being silenced, seeing the real were behind silence in the real date of Sai Baba's death in order to buy time to usurp the huge wealth of the trust fund. Yeah, trying to fleece the money. Asserting that properties worth hundreds of millions of dollars have changed hands. Dr. Aya, Sai Baba's personal physician, was heavily criticised for not maintaining any medical records of Sai Baba. Uh, so was he part of it? Beliefs and practices of the devotees. Uh, some sort of temple here or something. Here's some stamps in commemoration of him. On 23rd November 1999, the Department of Post, Government of India, released a postage stamp and a postal cover in recognition of the service rendered by Sai Baba in addressing the problem of providing safe drinking water to the rural masses and so forth. Satya Sai Organisation and so forth. Criticism, accusations, accusations against Satya. The uh, Sai Baba by his critics over the years have included sleight of hand, refers to fine motor skills when using when used by performing artists in different art forms to entertain and manipulate. It is closely associated with close up magic, card magic, card flourishing and stealing because of its heavy use and practice by magicians, etc. etc. Sexual abuse or molestation, money laundering fraud in the performance of service projects and murder. In 1963, uni Universalist Avatar Mehir Baba an Indian spiritual master who said he was the avatar or god in human form of the age of that era, a spiritual figure of the 20th century. He had a following of hundreds of thousands of peoples, mostly in India with a small number of followers in North America. It kind of looks like the one that was done for sexual molestation and then like they used to like pat him and all that you know to get the holy vibe off and all that sort of stuff but then after he got caught they started you know doing the same sort of thing to approach him and then they smacked him across the face with that sort of stuff that's what they do it might be a different guy though okay so in 1963, Universalist Avatar Mehe Baba referred to Sathya as a tantric and using tantric powers for his so-called miracles. In 1972, Abraham Kovur made the first public criticism of Sathya Sai Baba when he looked into a claim publicly narrated by, narrated by one devotee that Sai Baba had created a new model of a Seiko watch and found the claim to be untrue. In April 1976, Hasir Narasimhala a physicist, rationalist and then vice-chancellor of Bangalore University founded and chaired a committee to rationally and scientifically investigate miracles and other verifiable superstitions. Nara Simhaya 
wrote Sai Baba three widely publicized letters challenging him to perform his miracles under controlled conditions. The letters were ignored. Satya, Sai Baba said that he ignored the Seem Hayar's challenge because he felt that a scientific approach to spiritual issues was improper, adding that science must confine its inquiry only to things belong to the human senses, while spiritualism transcends the senses. If you want to understand the nature of spiritual power, you can do so only through the path of spiritual and not science. Spirituality, and not science. What science has been able to unravel is merely a fraction of the cosmic phenomena. The Rashi Mahaya Committee was dissolved in August 1977. He held the fact that Sai Baba ignored his letters to be an indication that his miracles were fraudulent. As a result of this episode, a public debate raged for several months in Indian newspapers. Indian rationalist Basava Premanand, who began campaigning against Sathya Sai Baba in 1976, unsuccessfully attempted to sue him in 1986 for violations of the Gold Control Act. What is that? A repealed act of the Parliament in of India, which was an act to control sale and holding of gold in personal possession. High demand for gold in India with negligible indigenous production results in gold imports leading to drastic outcomes. Probably. Citing Sai Baba was producing gold necklaces out of thin air without the permission of a gold control administrator. When the case was dismissed, Premanand unsuccessfully appealed on the grounds that claimed spiritual power is not a defence recognised in law. A 1995 TV documentary, Guru Busters, produced a filmmaker, Robert Eagle, for the UK's Channel 4, accused Sai Baba of faking his materialisations. The clip from the film was mentioned in the Deccan Chronicle on 23rd November 1992. In the front page headline, Double D Tape Unveils Baba Magic. Claims of Sai Baba resurrecting American devotee Walter Cowan in 1971 have been discussed by British journalist Mick Brown in his book, The Spiritual Tourist from 1998. And subsequently by Irene Du Haraldson, who interviewed doctors attending Cowan at the hospital these physicians reported that Cowan had been dangerously ill but not had, had not died Brown also related his experiences with alleged manifestations of the Buddha or sacred ash from Sai Baba's pictures in houses in London which he felt were not fraudulent or the result of trickery with regards to Sai Baba's claims of omniscience Brown wrote, Skeptics have produced documentation clearly showing discrepancies between Baba's reading of historical events and biblical prophecies in the established accounts. In the early 1990s, the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, created a secret report that stated that Sai Baba movement is likely to be eventually, well, likely to eventually become another worldwide religion. The CIA operative who wrote the report concluded it by stating, There's always a possibility too that the movement will collapse if Sai Baba is convincingly demonstrated to be a fraud. Allegations of abuse. In January 2002, a documentary produced by Denmark's National Television and Radio Broadcast Company, Denmark's Radio DR, called Seduced by Sai Baba, and we watched a bit of that, where a guy says, oh, he, he sat down and they were face to face, and, and uh, Sai Baba's ability was that he could look at you and pay you full attention, and there was something about his eyes and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so it was analyzed videos of public manifestations of Sai Baba and suggested they could be explained as sleight of hand or trickery, deceit, yeah, like a magician does. The documentary also presented interviews with Alaya Rahim, former devotee of Sathya Sai Baba, where he alleged abuse by Sathya Sai Baba. As a result, in 2002, the Parliament of the United Kingdom discussed the danger to male children of British families intending to visit the ashram of Sathya Sai Baba in case of individual audiences with the Guru. No alone time. Don't leave your children alone with them. In 2000, 
Four, the BBC produced a documentary titled The Secret Swami as part of its series, The World Uncovered. One central theme of the BBC documentary was again Alaya Rahim's sexual abuse allegations against Sathya Sai Baba. This documentary interviewed him together with Mark Roach, who had spent 25 years of his life since 1969 in the movement and alleged abuse by Sai Baba. The show also featured allegations from Sai Baba critic Basava Premanand. Premanan stated in his documentary that, in his opinion, Sai Baba faked his materializations. Posthumous trust issues. Probably with the trust that he set up. And the responses to that. Publications and documentaries. Sathya Sai Baba authored 15 books known as Vahini's River or Stream, originally written in Telugu and translated into English by Professor Narayan Kasturi. And so forth. And he's been featured in various documentaries and films. And there's even one on the X Files. In a 1995 X Files episode, The Kalusari, season 2, episode 21. During a conversation about Vibhuti, Sacred Ash, Sai Baba's name is cited, cited and mentioned. A fictitious character, Dr. Burke elaborates in 1979, I witness a guru named Sai Baba create an entire feast out of thin air. And his references. There's quite a lot there. And further reading, external links. So we have this other site here. It says something about uh, his coming and all that sort of stuff. It, it's predicted uh, in the Quran or by Muslims and all this other stuff that this certain uh, person would come and he'd do all these miracles and stuff and he had this mole on his face, all that sort of stuff. Here's a video of his supposed. Uh, Manifestations, etc. Sai Baba's tricks completely exposed. Such as Sai Baba fraud. Sai Baba's magic trick. Yeah, this is uh, on YouTube, so you should get any copyright claims or anything like that. Or strikes. Okay, it wasn't intentional. Okay, we just wanted people to see what he got up to. Physics and weak, but skeptics are now questioning the evidence. This video of Sai Baba is now being circulated secretly in India. It appears to show the godman using a stage magician's trick to produce a gold necklace for a distinguished guest. Just before he hands over an award, his fingers seem to be searching for something underneath the wooden box. He then draws back his hand, waves it around, and the necklace appears as if from thin air. The event was witnessed by India's Prime Minister, and recorded by the state-controlled Indian television network. But after an editor drew attention to the apparent trickery, this footage was not broadcast. A month? Yeah, so... <laughs> supposedly one of his many deceits. We actually uh, met an Indian man that went to one of his... Uh, gatherings, and he said... No, he's the real deal. I actually saw him um, manifest something like a flower or something from out of the blue, out of the air. There's been other reports that he pulled ancient, or well, not ancient, very old Civil War coins and stuff like that. And there's a couple of videos where he sort of vomits out this Indian uh, idol or something like that uh, maybe a little bottle he's, he's got this dust or something it's ash that comes out of his hands and all this sort of stuff very tricky ok so we're going to look at this book ok we may run out of time because we only have a limited time to use this book and this is titled Satha Sai Baba and Jesus Christ A Gospel for the Golden Age by Peter Phipps illustrations by Lynn Kriegler